brings you another of its series of programs on science. Man's effort to understand nature's laws. believe the solar system looked like this. The Earth in the center, the sun out there going around us. One of the men thinking about this was a Polish doctor, Nicholas Copernicus. He found an answer that his mind couldn't resist. The sun is really at the center. The Earth goes around the sun. But the establishment wasn't easily moved. It was easier for them to move Copernicus and his Earth with him. So are we today in a similar situation in terms of our understanding of consciousness? The predominant worldview is that consciousness somehow arises from brain activity, that the brain generates consciousness. Yeah, but then how could the brain know which sense is sending the message? Well, you've just asked the big question. Ever since Johannes Muller, the German physiologist of the 19th century, recognized this, scientists have been trying to understand how the brain transforms information it receives into action, sensation, and thought. But where does consciousness itself come from? Our assumption in science is that the ultimate nature of reality is matter, and that matter is not conscious. And so the problem is, how does unconscious matter ever give rise to a subjective experience? We know we are conscious, and we assume that matter is not conscious. So where do we draw the line between things that are conscious and things that are not conscious? Man, and only man, possesses a brain that gives him the capacity of imagination and thought far beyond the limited mental activity needed for daily survival. And only man has developed a singular ability to speak, to reason, and to plan far into the future. Wherever you draw the line, you get a problem. Below the line, there is just unconscious matter. Above the line, you have conscious beings, and something magic has happened. Out of unconscious matter, experience, subjective experience, has somehow arisen. And what is our experience anyway? What is reality? One thing we do know is that when we experience the world, information comes in through the senses, it's processed by the brain, and the brain then constructs its picture of what is out there. And that's what we experience, this reconstruction of the world. And in that reconstruction, we have shape, color, smell, solidity. But when we look at what the world out there is actually like, we find it's very, very different. When we delve down into the nature of matter, we find it's not solid at all. It's mostly empty space. There's nothing there. Or perhaps we should say there's no thing there. But what happens in experience is that emptiness, that no thingness, is transformed in the mind into shape, color, solidity. And then the interesting question becomes, what would science look like if we expanded our worldview to include consciousness as a fundamental quality of the cosmos?